Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salah Khan here. And today uh, we start the new topic. Uh, the next one in order is what? It's logic gates. Logic gates. That's our new topic of today. All right. And you know what logic gates are basically. We have seen the basic operations the and the or and the not operation previously in the boolean algebra but today we discuss them in in case of uh, in their gate properties all right so let me write the definition of of, of of a logic gate so i could write it as it is a physical device which performs logic operations on one or more logical inputs to produce a single logical output now this could be a very basic definition of a logic gate all right we have to focus we have to focus and you focus so 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 when you focus you find some basic things in this definition the very first is that a logic gate is a physical device it is a physical device now performs logic operations, all right? That's done. Performs logic operations, we know that very well. The next point is that on one or more logical inputs to produce a single output, you have a single logical output in a logic game. You can have, okay, so, so have a look. One, two, three, four, four basic points from a very simple definition when you focus on it. First of all, it's a physical device. The next is it performs logic operations, of course. The next, you can have one input, more than one input. You can have two, you can have three, four, so on. Uh, but, but the output is only one. And that output will be either a zero, which means a low state, a zero volt state, or the output would be a 1, which is a high state or a 5-fold state. All right? Okay. Now, uh, what are these logic operations? So, these logic operations may include the AND operation, the OR, means the inversion. So, we'll see that with the passage of time. But first, we see that the, the logic gates are basically divided into a group of three categories. All right? Uh, three basic uh, groups or categories. So if I say the first group are the basic gates, the basic gates, so that wouldn't be wrong. In the basic gates, we have the simpler gates, and the most simple you could say is the NOT gate. We have the AND gate in this uh, category as well, and the OR also. And we've seen this from the uh, we've seen this previously in the in the in the rules of Boolean algebra, but today we'll just give them a brief review. All right. Now the second that fall is the universal gate. Universal gates. And there are two gates, two gates in this category that are the NAND and the NOR gate. All right. And we'll see why they are called universal gates. They're called because we can implement any digital circuitry or any digital system with the help of only an AND or only an OR gate, which means it can act as an OR gate as well, as an AND gate as well, and as an OR gate as well. The third is the arithmetic category, which uh, uh, we could say the arithmetic gates. Uh, 
uh, we have two gates in this category as well, which are the exclusive OR gate and the exclusive NAR gate. So these two gates fall in this category and they are called arithmetic gates because they are used to perform arithmetic operations. All right? Okay. So we start with what? With the NAND, with the, with the NAR gate. All right? We, we start with the NAR gate, the simplest one. Okay? So I'll, I'll, I'll write over here. The NAR gate. And what is this NOT gate basically? It is a single input gate. It, it, it has one input and it, and it gives, uh, from the definition, it ha all the gates have one output. So it has one input and of course it will have a one output, all right? And what does this gate do? This complements the input. Complements the input. All right? Which means if the output is zero, the in input is zero, so the output would be one, and if the output is one, so the input would be zero, right? Now, now what is the symbol of this NOT gate? So the symbol is like this. It could be a, a, a triangle, you could call it a triangle, and a, and a bubble is placed. All right? Okay. So now, if the uh, uh, if the input is let's say a and the output is given through a function y so this y would be what this y would be complement of a all right now let's see we, we, we draw the truth table for it the truth table is what it's a table con containing outputs for each and every combination of inputs you know that but let's say I write down the definition of a, uh, or, or I write it over here, truth table. So what is a truth table? It is a table containing outputs for each combination of inputs and what are these combination of inputs we've seen them previously but we revise them if we have n total number of inputs so we can have 2 to the power n input combinations all right and we know this very well so now we draw the truth table for this NOT gate so let's say the the input is, uh, is A and the output, let's say Y, A, a function is complement of A, all right? The, the, the NOT gate what, does what? It complements your input. And, and it's a single input gate, so if you have the uh, input as a 0, the output would be 1. And if you have an input as a 1, so the output would be 0, all right? So that's about the NOT gate. It does what? It complements the input. Okay, so the next that we have in line is the AND gate. AND gate. And we know what does the AND gate does. So the AND gate uh, is a multi-input gate, all right? And, and, it, and, and the output is high. In the AND gate, the output is high. If all inputs are high, if all the inputs are high, all right? And the symbol for this AND gate is like this. Okay, well, let's say I talk about two inputs. So if the inputs are A, B, and the function Y. So this y would be what? The mathematical formula is a and it would be this dot represents the and operation. All right. Now we have the truth table for it. Let's say for the two inputs, we have a, b, and then the output is y, which is a and it with b. So the input combinations could be 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. 
Now, in this case, the output will only be high if both the inputs are high, which means this would be high and the rest of them are zero. All right? Yes. And now we have some basic properties which we've already seen before, but we, we revise it over here. If A is ended with A, if A is ended with A complement, if A is ended with zero, or if A is ended with one. So what do we get? Now A ended with A is A itself. A ended with one is A itself. A ended with zero is a zero. Yes, and A ended with A complement is also zero. All right, all right. Now we, we, we see that this AND gate follows the, uh, we check, we check if this follows the commutative law or it does not, commutative. So what's the commutative law? The commutative law we can say A ended with B is equal to B ended with A. So let's say A is equal to 0 and B is equal to 1. So 0 ended with 1 is a 0. 0 ended with 1. And in the right hand side we are, oh sorry. Let me write over here. 0 ended with 1. And in the right hand side we have a 1 ended with 0. So 0 ended with 1 from the truth table is 0. And a 1 ended with 0 from the truth table is a 0. Which means the AND gate satisfies the commutative law. All right. Now if we have, uh, if we check for the associative law. So the associative law is, let's say, like this. A ended with B ended with C. All right. Which is equal to A ended with B first and the whole ended with C. So now let's say we take inputs A is equal to 0, B is equal to 1, and C is equal to 0. All right. So now A is 0. So 0 is ended with what? With B ended with C. 1 ended with 0. And the right hand side is what first? A ended with B. So 0 ended with 1 first, and then it's ended with 0. So first we solve the bracket. So which means 0 ended with, 1 ended with 0 is a 0. And then you have the right hand side to 0 ended with a 1 is a 0. And the 0 comes. So 0 ended with 0 is again 0. And to the right hand side again. So which means left is equal to right. And the AND gate also satisfies what? The associative law. All right? All right. Now the next, the next gate that we have is what? It's the OR gate. It's the OR gate. And what the OR gate does, in the OR gate, the output is high if any one or all the inputs are high. In this case, the output is high if any one or all inputs are high. All right. And the symbol for this, the symbol is like this. A little curved. Well, I'm just a little weak in drawing this symbol, so you should conform it from your book. I draw it correctly, but I don't draw it properly. All right. So this. This is also a multi-input gate. All right. As the AND gate, the OR gate is also what? It's a multi input gate. So we discuss a, a two inputs. So let's say this is A, the second is B, and the function is given Y, which is equal to A or with B. This plus shows the R operation. All right. Now if we draw the truth table for it, so A, B, and Y, which is A or with B. So we have two inputs, which means through the part two, we have four uh, input combinations. And we've explained already how to do that. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. So in this case, the output is high if any one. So any one. 
so this is high any one this is high or all the inputs are high so these two are high as well so this is one and this is nothing is high so we have a zero in this case now that's the truth table for the OR gate all right now again some basic properties that we, we we've already seen before we've already seen before but let's say we discuss so a or with a a or with a complement a or with one a or with zero all right now a or with a is again a a or with a complement is one what a or with one is one and a or with zero is again a all right so these are the basic properties that we've already seen before now we check if, if this OR gate also follows the uh, commutative and associative laws or not. Commutative law we see first. So the commutative we have A uh, OR with B is equal to B OR with A. So let's say this A is a 1, B is a 0. So first to the left hand side we have a 1 OR with a 0. And then to the light, we have zero or with a one. So one or with zero is a one from the truth table, and zero or with a one is also a one. So which means this or gate satisfies the commutative law. All right. Now we see the associative law. We check if it satisfies. So we have it like this: a or with first b or c and we have a or b whole or with c so now let's say we have a is equal to zero b is equal to one and c is equal to zero so have a look zero or with one or zero equals to the right side we have uh, zero or one whole or with zero so now have a look. One or with zero is what? It's one. So we have zero or one. And zero or one, we have one or zero. Now this is again a commutative law which is, has been satisfied, and we check from the truth table. Zero or with one is a one. One or with zero is a one, which means one is equal to one, and the left hand side equals right hand side again. And the associative law is also satisfied by the OR gate. All right. And I believe we finish the lecture over here and we continue the next logic gates in the next lecture. Till then, take care of yourselves and everyone around you. Goodbye.